It's the truth. We just need to believe it and rest in it. Mark chapter 5, verse, we ready? Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Um, and they, this is, this is a Jesus cast, cast out some devils out of a man. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gardarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always at night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered and saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was nigh to the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord God, for this opportunity that you've given us once again to come before you to sing praise unto your great and holy name, God. Lord, to give to you out of what you, what you have so kindly given to us. And now to hear your life-transforming word. We ask even now, Father, that you would prepare our hearts to be good ground for your word. That you would cause every distraction in our minds and our hearts to be pushed aside. That our focus and attention will be upon you. And we pray, God, that you would give us understanding today that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear. Lord God, what your spirit has to say to us and the courage and the wisdom to apply your word to our lives, that your name might be glorified by our living and that we might be all that you created us to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. So there's some, there are definitely some um, uh, somewhat, I wish, dare, shall I dare say, mysterious things that take place here, and you wonder, like, why Jesus sent the devils and the swine and uh, different things like that. Uh, I'm not going to focus on those things. Uh, I'm going to focus just on some uh, pretty clear things uh, that we see in this incident of this man who was possessed with a devil, or as it turns out, several devils. Um, that he was living in the, in, the, in the graveyard. That's the tombs. He was out there living in the graveyards and he was wild and crazy. He was cutting himself and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they tried to, tried to tame him and they, they couldn't. Um, and I wanted to just focus first of all that um, and let us be mindful because we are in a spiritual warfare. You know, and sometimes we kind of forget that. I think that sometimes we, you know, we just think we're, we're at, the, at the beach somewhere and we're just chilling. But I, I've been saying it for years that if you're not fighting, the, if you're not fighting, then you're probably losing because there is a battle going on. Right? And right here we see the destructive power of the devils. Right. We see this man, he's cutting himself and Satan has got him gripped. Right. We see um, that, you know, that that he, he's in a he's in a way that he is he is making life bad for himself, doing things that, that would be against his own best interest. And that's, you know, when you see things like that go on, you know that somebody's not being influenced by God because the influence of God will cause us to take care of ourselves, not to harm ourselves. The inherent uh, tendency of man is to care about himself and to nurture, you know, take care of himself. Ephesians 5.29 says this, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. 
Right? People take care of themselves, right? Naturally, that's a natural tendency. And when you saw that, see this man out there cutting himself, and you can know that there's an influence that is not godly. That is not godly. There. We tend to do things in our lives, and all of us have been there, that we have done things, and this is not good for me. But we are doing it anyway, and I can tell you one thing. I'm not saying that we were possessed with the devil, but we weren't influenced by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so we can begin to measure where our influence is coming from just by if what we're doing is actually good for us or bad for us. Because God doesn't, doesn't move us to do things that are bad for us. Are you with me? Right. You know, the, the, the devils are destructive. You know, he, 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 Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? I mean, these pigs, when, they, when, when Jesus let them run into the pigs, they took the whole, the whole herd over the cliff. Destructive. This man is out there, he's unclothed, he's naked, he's cutting himself, he's wild. Satan robs him of his dignity. When we see, let me tell you, I know, you know, we, talk, we call, call a lot of things old-fashioned and this and that, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, dignity ain't old-fashioned. All right? Self-respect ain't old-fashioned. All right? And when, and when we see ourselves doing things that are compromising the dignity of us being created in the image of God, that is just not keeping with the times. We are influenced by our spirit because there's a warfare going on. There's something called the spirit of the age. Right? And there's warfare going on, and we need to keep that in mind. That wherever there is destructive behavior, whether self-destructive or destructive to someone else, you can be sure that there is at least demonic influence. Are y'all hearing me? There's a spiritual war that is being waged. Paul told the Ephesians in chapter 6, verse 12, he said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, we recognize that, you know, well, there's war, there's Egypt and Gaza's warring, and, you know, there was the Gulf War, and there was, the, you know, the World War I and the Vietnam. We recognize those things, but the reality is that whenever, the, when none of those wars are going on, there is always a spiritual war being waged. For we wrestle not, Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And it ain't against people, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And we live our lives either influenced by godliness or by demonic forces. Did you hear what I said? We will live our lives, either the dominant influence of our lives will be by godliness or demonic forces. Now I say dominant because I don't think anybody on either side of that ever 100% all the time, you know, is, is, is influenced by, you know, good or bad. What I mean is that I can be a good man, I'm born again, I got the Holy Spirit, but sometimes I do stuff I got to repent of, that means that God didn't influence me. All right? That I was influenced by, by demonic forces, by, by wrong, by evil, to do that thing. And then there are people, and I, I think about myself, before I was born again, and I was, you know, I was dominantly doing a lot of bad stuff, but I also did some, some good things. Are you with me? But we will live our lives influence, the dominant influence of our lives will be either godliness or we be demonic forces. You have got to evaluate your decisions and you at least give yourself the honesty of saying, you know, who's influencing me to do this, right? Ladies, when you go to get the clothes and put the clothes on, you gotta at least say, is, is God influencing this or, or no? Right? I, I don't forget about the times and old fashioned and all of that. Is it God or no? Are you with me? Because there's a battle going on, and it's for your soul, and, it, and it'll, first of all, it'll, it'll beat you down and take your dignity. Are you with me? I'm just, I'm just making suggestions. We've got to avoid behaviors that are spiritually, emotionally, and physically destructive. We have to avoid behaviors that are, that there are behaviors that are emotionally destructive, uh, relationships that are emotionally destructive, you know, that take us away from 
the way God wants us to be and think and feel. And we got to avoid those things. We got to avoid things that are, that, 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 that are spiritually and, and emotionally and physically destructive. Things like drug abuse and alcohol abuse, you know. We got we to gotta avoid those things. Uh, fornication and adultery, those things are, 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 are destructive to us as people. The Bible says that, that um, marriage is honorable and all and the bed on the file, right? But the scripture says that he who fornicates sins against his own, his own body. That's what the Bible says. Hey, this ain't Theron Smith. That's the Bible. He said that to me. Right? And I had to, I had to be like, okay, am I going to walk with it or not? Are you with me? Because I could not walk with it, but I still was messing over my, myself. Are you with me? This man is up there in the, in, in the tombs and he is cutting himself. He is cutting himself. He is messing over himself but because he is now gripped with demonic influence. Are you with me? Amen. We see how destructive the power of, uh, of the devil is, but we also see the, how, how the delivering power of God is. Because the Lord comes and, and reminds us that he is stronger than the devil and has authority over the devil. When I was uh, uh, jotting this down, I thought about the song, uh, What a Wonderful God. What, a, what is it? What a Wonderful God, Beautiful, whatever it is. What it is. Yeah, beautiful name. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. I mean, I ain't got to know that. <laughs> Anyway, the part I like is she said, you have no, no rival. Talking about talking to God, you have no rival, you have no equal. There ain't no, there, there's no competition. Are you with me, right? There was a battle going on. We the ones fighting the battle, you know. There may be, you know, uh, Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. God is seated, at the, at, at, you know what I'm saying, on the throne. Firmly seated on the throne. And, he, and as Marie prayed this morning, he establishes the end from the beginning. Right? He establishes the end from the... I can remember when I was a young Christian, and I, uh, I, um, I heard someone say it, and, and, and it really, uh, you know, helped me in, in, in a bit, said that, you know, if, if you're worried about things and worried about who, you know, who's going to win and how, you know, can God handle this and all that, go to the back of the book, Right? <laughs> Go to the end and see that the, at the end of the story has already been written. Are you, are you with me? Right. We win. Jesus is strong in the devil and, and, you know, and he has authority over the devil and there is no competition. Luke chapter 10 verses 17 and 18. Jesus uh, had sent the 70 out uh, to go and represent him. And the Bible says then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall from, like lightning from heaven. You know, like, you think this, is, this ain't no competition? Right? They, was, they were shocked, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> they were shocked because they had seen the, destructive, the destructiveness of the devil. They had seen the devil grip people and they couldn't break loose, right? And, you know, they had seen people like this man who had to be you know, tied up out of town somewhere because he was such so wild and full of the devil. And here it is, they go out in Jesus' name and now the devil is subject to them. And they are shocked and Jesus is like, you don't need to be shocked, right? I gave you my authority. That reminds me that my Savior has authority, right? That anything that comes my way, you gotta say, you walk with Christ, anything that comes your way has to first go through him. And he will only allow it if, it's, if he will work it out for your good. He is that physician that will measure out every trial, every tribulation exactly to what it will take to shape and mold you to who he wants you to be. Isn't that beautiful? So here the devil acknowledges the authority of Jesus in uh, verses 6 and 7, all right? The man saw him, and he, 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 he comes, and he falls down, and then the devil cries out, you know, what are we to do with you, you know, you know, uh, son of God, the most high, you know, don't torment me. He's been beating this dude down, 
Now you're out here begging to Jesus. The devil has no power over those who receive Jesus. That's the takeaway, right? That you don't need to go through life scared, right? Scared. I know we live in Louisiana, right? And the people talk about voodoo and all that. You don't need to be scared of voodoo, right? They can, they can put a curse, they're going to put voodoo on me, you know what I'm saying? I got, I'm a child of God, right? I got Jesus inside of me. You might voo you, but you ain't going to voo you. You heard me? <laughs> Come on now. First John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Are you with me? Right? You got Christ on the inside. He is the greater one. This is the one that all of these devils that had this man acting wild, crazy, butt naked out there, cutting himself, you know, just acting a fool. Nobody could control him because they couldn't control the devil. And now here it is. They come and fall down. Jesus, just, just don't, don't torment us before, before the time, which might remind you that they know that eventually the time is coming. Jesus is the greater one, and he's in you, right? The devil robbed this man of his dignity. But we read in verse 15 that the people came to Jesus and they saw that man who had that legion in him sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. The devil robbed him of his dignity, but Jesus gave it, gave it back. I'm telling you, whenever you are contempted to do something, you got to think about how will it affect your dignity. I don't know where, what happened, but if you don't care about dignity, that is a sign of being influenced by demonic forces. Because God created us and we are dignified by our very virtue of being created in his image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in his image right and we are supposed to represent that image in, with a measure of dignity are you with me a measure of dignity the way we speak the way we behave the way we dress right the way we work it is all supposed to be dignified are you hearing me I've said, I've been saying it for years, that the Christian worker is supposed to be the best worker on a job. Are you, are you, you are, are the one who has the best ethic on the job. Maybe you don't have the best skill or whatever, but you are the one who is trustworthy and you are faithful and you are diligent because you are representing God. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Right? I, used to, I, I, I remember uh, I used to say this a long time. I used to say this a lot long, a long time ago that it's kind of difficult, right? Is that when we, um, you know, we work for the man and then we not work for God. And then when it's time for a promotion, now we want to pray to God and let God, you know, hook us up with the promotion. We need to work for God. Right. In other words, I need to do my job whether the man is looking or not. Because God is always, he's always looking. Are y'all with me? Amen. Promotion comes from the Lord. This reminds me, so here's this man, and he's in a bad way, guys. But Jesus comes and he has, a, he has an encounter with the Lord. And Jesus undoes what the devil had done to him. Which reminds me that all of us get affected in this life. I mean, this is, that's warfare going on. There's a reason why we have issues, right? There's a reason why we have emotional scars and things that happen. And you know, people say, oh, that's life. That is life, but it's life because that is warfare. Because there is a warfare. And that's why, you know, we, we wound each other and we say things to each other we shouldn't say. And we end up with scars and, and, and hurt and pain. It is warfare. And the devil is doing stuff to all of us uh, at some time impact. And, and we have had Satan do stuff to us. And this is what this, this, this encourages me so because Jesus can undo what the devil has done to us. He can undo what the devil has. I don't have to be I, the man had to be crazy all his life. Are you with me? Jesus undid what the devil did to him. 
So I began to ask myself, what are there some things that Satan has done to me? You know, some of us have scars we live with and it affects us, right? You know, we've, we've had bad experiences and it affects the way we go forward, right? People had bad experience and I, 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 was, I had a bad experience in church, a bad experience in this and a bad experience with, with a relationship and those things affect us going, uh, have a negative effect on us going forward. That ain't God's will. That bad experience negatively affect me going forward, right? Jesus wants to undo those things so that you can be free to be who he wants you to be. Are you with me? So you got to begin to think about what has Satan done to you? And has it been undone? Because it definitely can be undone. And that's what this message is about. It's an opportunity for change. Because we always need change at some point or another. Luke chapter 13, um, when Jesus healed that woman that had that issue of blood, they came tripping about it was on a Sabbath day and Jesus said this and I, and I picked up on this. He said, so ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham who Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years. You see what Satan did to her? Satan had her bound it for 18 years with this, this sickness. And Jesus said, I undid it. Are you with me? She came to him and he undid it. We need to go to him. We need to take, take our issues to him. Don't try to work it out. They got, whatever Satan does to you, you can't, you can't undo it. You got to get the Lord to undo it. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying to you? You got to get the Lord to undo it. And then, um, you know, we, 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 I think, where we stop at? Verse 15, right? So let, let me show you something in verses 16 and 17. So 16 says, and they saw it and told them how it, how it befell to him that was possessed of the devil and also concerning the swine. So they told him what happened to the man with the devil. And then they told him also, oh, yeah, by the way, 2,000 pig went over the hill, over the cliff. And verse 17 says, and they began to beg him to leave their coast. And this reminds me of the deep roots of our depravity. Of our depravity. The depravity is moral corruption. That you and I are not just, you know, kind of bad people here, they are good, good people who do bad things. Mankind, we are bad at our root. And we don't need behavior modification. We need to be, as Jesus said, born again. We need to be made over, right? But that's what he comes to do, right? That's what he comes to do. Jesus displays the power of God and the people ask him to, to leave. Can you believe that? Right? John 1.11 says he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Reminds me that everyone won't be excited about the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, years ago, Someone gave their life to Christ and they were a little excited. They were born again. They could feel the freshness of their sins being delivered. And, you know, just when, you, when, you, when you're genuinely born again, you feel a weight lifted off of your, of your soul. That guilt of your stain of your sins that has weighed you down. And this lady felt that and she was so liberated and free and excited and she went and told her family and expected them to rejoice with her and it was just the opposite. Instead of rejoicing, they were not happy. And you would think that everybody would be happy. And I began to see more and more how Jesus says you, you, got, you, you got to be born again to see it. You know, you know, we don't see it and then we get new life. He gives us a new life, then we see it. We can see it. I can remember when I, 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 I got this new life and I opened my Bible and I read a scripture because I, uh, you know, I read a verse or two in, in my life. Um, and so I went and read a verse of scripture that I had read before. And when I read it, it's like it was just jumping out the page on me with clarity. Yeah. With, you know, with like just, you know, like I was reading with my heart. And I was thinking at that moment, I thought, why everybody can't see this? And then God reminded me, you know, at one point you could, 
right? <laughs> the last time you looked at this, you couldn't see it, right? Which reminds me that we have got to, those who have the light have got to shine the light, and we've got to pray. And we've got to pray for people, right? Because here it is, the power of God was there to be delivered. Jesus had healed this man. This is a man set free. And the people are like, man, you look, cost us all our pigs, right? You know, there's something wrong with caring about an animal more than the person. And I ain't saying you shouldn't care about animals, but come on, let's be real. Not more than people. Not more than people. I, got, I need to care about a, the soul of a human being more than anything else. You are with me? The human race is so radically corrupt that we actually feel more comfortable. When, I, when we're not born again, we feel more comfortable in the presence of evil than holiness. More satisfied hearing the words of deception than the words of God. Just the way it is. John 3.19 said, and this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I've been there. Right? But I met him. And he undid what the devil did to me. Right? I had bad thinking, bad feelings, bad attitude. He undid what the devil did to me. God wasn't my cup of tea. Right? I went to church because I was trying, you know, I didn't want to go to hell. I thought maybe, you know, it might, might help out. But I wasn't, you know, I mean, we ain't sitting around talking about no Jesus. You know, that was out of the question. The God that created me in his image, I didn't want to have nothing to do with him. Somebody messed over me. But thank God Jesus undid what the devil did to me. And now I can have joy in the presence of the Lord. I can have satisfaction in the presence of the Lord, right? I can look forward to the presence of the Lord. I can go in my room and close my door because I'm making time and an appointment. I'm about to get on my knees and go talk to the Lord. Are you with me? Right? I couldn't do that before because Satan had done something to me. Right? He had messed me up. But thank Jesus, he undid it. He undid it. Regeneration. Being born again is the only hope for mankind. And that's our hope. Right? That's our hope. That is spiritual restoration. He renews us. And this is the scripture I alluded to in John 3, 3. Jesus said, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And as with this man, Jesus come to, comes to us and gives us an opportunity for change. An opportunity for change. Because I realized that I didn't need to be a better me. I needed to be changed. I needed to be transformed. So I could grow into the person that God created me to be. I didn't need to be better, a better who I was, better version of who I was. I needed to be a new me so I could grow into the person that God created me to be. God's not trying to make us better and when, when finds us and say, I'm going to make you a better you. I'm going to change you. He told Peter, your name is this, you shall be this, right? From one thing to another. A transformation. I began to think and realize, what is that? What is that person that God created me to be? And I settle here, a person that once lived mainly under demonic influence, but now lives mainly influenced by the Holy Spirit. A person that finds satisfaction in the Lord's presence. Because when this man was changed, you see in verse 18, and when he was coming to the ship, he that had been demon possessed with the devil prayed him, asking him that he might be with him. Right? The man came to Jesus and he said, Lord, let me, let me stay with you. Because that's, that's a natural effect of it. If you, have, if, you, if, you have, if you say, I got God in my life, then you want to be with, that you want to be in the presence of the Lord. Right? You, that, that, that's mighty fine with you. Are you with me? 
You know, this man didn't do, you know, this man didn't do like, you know, we may see people do today, you know, go to, the, go, to go to one of the Christians somewhere, go to the church, get prayed for because they need a healing, and then something happens, they get healed, and, boy, you know, the disaster's averted, you know, they, they're no longer scared of this, this, this deadly disease that they thought they had, and they say, all right, thank you, Jesus, see you later. No, nah, that's not what God wants, because that doesn't help us out. Because at the end, we still, gonna, everybody going to die. Whether I die from this deadly disease or die from old age, I'm going to die from sin, right? Because sin, the wages of sin is death, the gift of God, eternal life is Christ. Sin comes in the world through, in, through uh, I mean, death came in the world through sin. So I'm going to die because sin is in the world. So the most important thing is not to try to find a way to live, but a way to have eternal life. Eternal life life forever with Christ. Are you with me? God created me to be, he wants me to be. He, he wants me to be this person and that's why he changed me. A person that I used to mainly live in, in, influenced by demonic forces, now the main in, influence of my life is the Holy Spirit. Right? I'm a person now that I find satisfaction in the Lord's presence. Put godly music on, I'm good. Go to church, I'm good. Pray, prayer's going on, I'm good. If the Lord's present there, it makes me feel mighty fine. Yeah. Are you with me? Amen. That's what he wants. Somebody that he could take pleasure in. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. And the last thing I realize is that he wants me to grow into being a person that is, who is eager to be a light and a witness to his goodness trying to make his name famous and not mine. You got to watch that in the world because we live in a world today where and it's about you, right? It's about you. And, and, that, and that, that spirit and feeling and attitude is perpetuated by social media, right? It's about you, right? You go viral. You get the clicks. You shine. You, you know, build your brand. But God wants you to be a person that you're trying to make him famous, him known, and let him raise you up if he wants to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if he raises you up, there ain't a devil in hell that can pull you down. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Right? Amen. In verses 19 and 20, However, howbeit Jesus did not allow him to come with him, he said, go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for you and has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to publish in the capitalists how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. See what I'm saying? He saves us. He draws us to himself. And then he sends us to go and represent him to others because he wants them to come to him. And one thing he's promised us, right? He says, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen? Amen. Amen. We stop right here.